Good morning, Dr. Demopoulos. Thank you for Good joining morning. us at eCancer. Can you tell me something about the current state of play as far as the second line treatment of multiple myeloma is concerned? Yes, uh, this is a rapidly evolving field because we have several novel agents, uh, actually a second generation of novel agents uh, that uh, are emerging uh, with uh, significant activity uh, in relapsed refractory myeloma and also uh, in the second line uh, patients. So in uh, this meeting, uh, we uh, present uh, the second line treatment data on patients who were randomized uh, in the MMO15 trial. This is a trial which randomized uh, non-transplant eligible patients to receive either melphalan-prednisone for nine courses or melphalan-prednisone and alidomide for nine courses or the third arm uh, patients received melphalan-prednisone lenalidomide for nine courses followed by lenalidomide maintenance. And uh, we know that uh, lenalidomide maintenance was associated with uh, a longer uh, progression-free survival, and this was the main finding of the study, indicating the value of lenalidomide as a maintenance treatment in patients with uh, myeloma who are not eligible for high-dose therapy. Uh, in this meeting, we are presenting uh, the outcome of the patients who progressed in, one, uh, in each of these three arms, uh, and the type of second-line therapy that they have received, uh, and we are particularly interested uh, in those patients who received uh, second-line therapy with lenalidomide. And we were able to show that prior treatment with lenalidomide was not associated with development of resistance. Of course, I would like to note that patients who progressed on lenalidomide maintenance did so at low dose of lenalidomide and they experienced primarily biochemical progression. Thus, these patients were able to be rescued again with increasing the dose of lenalidomide and adding dexamethasone. Overall, the main finding of, of this analysis is that uh, patients uh, uh, do not appear to develop resistance with prior treatment with lenalidomide and they can derive a significant benefit from second-line therapies. So in, in your view, does this represent a significant advance in the treatment of these patients? I think it's a useful information because uh, whenever we have a patient who is being maintained with something, there is always a concern uh, whether uh, at the time of progression, what would be the characteristics of this disease, whether he will have a more aggressive disease, a more resistant disease. So it is always a useful information to know. Thank you very much indeed.